video we're going to just uh, recycle some parts. Uh, this old Sanyo tape deck, I'm not going to be repairing this one because it needs like four or five belts. And for what belts cost these days, unfortunately it's just not economically, even though it's a fairly nice deck, it's an old, just an old Dolby B deck. And the front corner here is kind of crunched, so it's not something that really has much value. But what I really do like off this thing is it does have a nice vacuum fluorescent display um, VU meter. And I think that might come in handy for another project. So, this video, we're going to be gutting and taking that display out and taking out the associated power supply so that we can incorporate that into another project that you will see, well, by the time you see this video, it'll be in another project. But right now we're going to take the display apart and then we'll figure out what to do with it. Now, if you're wondering what's going on with the TV that's got the fish tank on in the background, this is a Prima t the Prima TV that I fixed on a prior video. I've just been test running it here before I put it back in service. I like to, whenever I repair something, I like to generally let it run for several hours. This one here is finishing its test run. It has a fantastic picture. That's my aquarium that's on there. And that's playing on this little media player that I got. Uh, I got this at an auction. I bid two dollars on a bunch of electronics in this little media player and then it just it just you put a video on a compact flash card and it'll just replay it over and over it's like designed for uh, well I think I mentioned before in another video the original video that was on there was actually for a Bose speaker display anyway here's the uh, here's what I need to take out of this thing it's gonna be pretty simple everything's all self-contained on that board and what's what makes this such an attractive piece of hardware to work with is that it's got calibration controls for both inputs. So I'll be able to calibrate it at known levels so that the display will accurately uh, display audio signals. And uh, we got a power supply back here. It's got a little transformer back here. This has got the high voltage to supply for the display as well as for the tape deck. We don't need all these ones, but if we look here down on these wires, the wires from the vacuum display go directly back to the power supply so we don't even need to um, remove any of these we can just take the whole harness off just as it is just remove the wires that go down to the circuit board and we'll have here's our input wires here right here's our left and right input left is the red the right is the orange so we cut those two wires there those are left and right input. This goes to our power supply. All we need to do is remove the wires that don't go to the FL display. Namely, this wire. Those wires that go to the rest of the circuitry. We should be able to lift this and the power transformer out as one module and it should be ready to go. So let's get that removed so we can test it. And this may be just as simple as lifting a few plastic clips out of the way to release the whole front display. This might even just come out as one complete unit. I don't know if there's any screws in it. I don't think there is. I think it's just these plastic clips. So if I lift up these plastic clips, for that matter, we can just break these stupid things off because this thing's not going back together. Always wear eye protection when doing this type of stuff too. As the piece of broken plastic just whizzes past my head. There we have a nice, look at that, beautiful display. It's hooked up with wires. We can just take out a couple screws here, remove the power transformer, and it's ready for mounting in a nice little cabinet. And you know what I'm thinking? If you remember the digital clock that I made on a prior video, um, with a nice little wooden case. I'm thinking this would really go nice in that case. That's what I'm thinking it will go into. So we'll just cut these wires here for the power supply. The power cord. Here we have it, a complete display. Let's uh, hook this up and make it work. Okay, we're just going to uh, solder on a couple wires here. Now this is the primary, the other wires, the other line cord went 
the line cord went between those two and the switch went between these two here because it had a power switch. Capacitor was just there, the only reason that's there is that was to absorb any noise when the power switch turned on and off. We don't need that capacitor anymore because once this thing is up and running it won't be turned off, especially if the power supply is going to power a clock as well as the uh, display. It's going to be left on all the time. So we can just wire it up so that the transformer is always live. Now, I don't really want to get electrocuted while I'm working on this thing, so I'm just going to take some black tape and we'll wrap it around. I can remove this capacitor. We don't need that on here. It just gets in the way. I'm going to wrap it around these pins here just to insulate so that I don't get the shock because this will be mains voltage so we'll just wrap a couple of turns of tape around here. When I finish this project off I'm going to put some heat shrink tubing on here but for this process while I'm working on it I wrap it with tape. That will be good enough for my personal safety while I'm working on this thing. There. That'll prevent me from accidentally making contact with mains voltage. Let's plug this thing in and see how it looks. Well that looks very cool and I'm going to hook up an audio source now to it so we can actually see it in operation. I just have to make up an audio cord so I can plug it into a source. So uh, let me dig something up here. We'll figure out which wires. Obviously the, the wires going into it are going to be these two but I got to find a ground point as well for the ground and then uh, we'll get this thing hooked up and see how it looks when it's running. So I just need to find some voltages on here. I'm looking for a 12 volt source so I can power the clock. I think it's running on 12 volts AC and I just start to check some of the voltages between uh, 16 volts between those two 9.5, 33 a little high, 21 a little high, 43 volts. Now I think don't think we need 43 volts and we can check some voltages between the different pins here. These are AC voltages. There's 9 volts. 21 volts. Okay, let's go to the next pin down here and see. 21. 5 volts. 12. There's 12 volts there. There's 12 volts as well there. So this must be the center tap. 12 volts. It'll be 24 volts across there. Yeah, there we go. Those two have got... You probably can't see what I'm doing. Let me just show, move the thing around here a bit so you can see what I'm touching here, which which pins I'm on. I'll just zoom the camera in a bit so you can see it a little better. Maybe we'll turn this thing around and make it a little clearer for you guys. So this is a multi-tap transformer and if we look at the display here, uh, this is the center tap for this, these two coils. So if I measure from here to there, it's 21 volts, but here it's 12 volts. That one's also 12 volts. That's five volts. 21 volts and 21 volts. So this is the center tap, this one here that the blue wire is on. So across these two we'll have 42 volts, which we do. And across these two we'll have 24 volts. So this is one, this is one winding, this is the center tap, and this is one winding of the center tap here. And that's the second winding for 5 volts. And then this is a 24 volt winding here, center with the same center tap, common center tap. And that side is also will be 21.6, 21.5, close enough. That's the center tap. So basically, I can go between that center tap and one of these, and that'll give me my 12 volts AC to run the clock, which is great. And uh, then there's this is probably the filament. What is these ones here down here? That's DC, I'm sure. That's a DC voltage on that one. What's this one got on it? 27 volts DC because there's, this is good. DC and uh, AC off it. So the AC tap is rectified to DC. This is the this is the DC voltage here. Those ones aren't connected to anything. I just want to cut. So just cut that out. That's the 27 volt DC for the fluorescent display. That's the high voltage source there. DC and 
here's our AC signals here. AC so clock will run off those I just got to find a, a, a ground reference on this thing and this is going to be ground here I think yeah this is earth the blue wire here is earth so I should be able to earth my I should be able to earth my audio ground to the earth side and feed the audio signal into these wires here and we should have a working meter so let's just grab an audio source and we'll test out that theory. And of course, if we follow the trace from this earth side here, the E, it goes over to here. There's a little jumper wire that goes over to here, which brings it back to here. So this is our this is our ground wire here. That's our ground that we use for the for the audio. I can also use that as as one side of the ground for my uh, clock as well. One one side. That's the center tap of the transformer. Okay, I just got to find a cord that I can hack here, and uh, actually I've got some jumpers, so I don't even need to hack a cord. We'll just grab some jumper leads here, because I'm going to make a proper. I'm going to put a proper uh, um, panel on the back of it with audio in input plugs. So just for now, I just need something to temporarily connect this thing to an audio source, so that we can see what it's doing. Well, there we have it. I've just got it plugged into my BlackBerry here. I've got my jazzradio.com playing. I don't have the music. I don't have the speakers hooked up to this thing because uh, we don't need to worry. We we'll have to deal with uh, copyright. But as you can see, I've just taken my audio out cord and I've connected it up to the two wires going into the module. Ground over to here, and here we have it. Everything is working. So what I had originally planned to do was to put the view meter display inside this cabinet with the clock and I thought that would look really cool and I think it will look cool the vacuum fluorescent display clock and the view meter what do you think of that I think that looks pretty damn cool if you ask me I don't have the back on it yet so you can still probably see through the back of it but um, that's ideally what I, what I was envisioning we have the clock display and we have a nice audio level display and I'll hook this up to my computer and then anytime I've got any signals passing through it I'll know my signals I won't even have to look at them on the screen I'll just be able to see at a glance whether my recording levels on my computer or playback levels are are too high or I can use it with anything I mean that I think is pretty cool and the fact that I'll be able to power everything from the one power transformer I'm still trying to figure out where I'm going to stuff that transformer because there's not a lot of room left in this cabinet but uh, I'm sure we'll figure out a way to stuff it in there somewhere. But um, there we go. That's what I had envisioned when I started this project of seeing how I could recycle this vacuum fluorescent display module from this old tape deck. And uh, I actually like the, look out, like the layout of that because uh, it makes more use of the actual inside of the cabinet. The clock display by itself looked kind of uh, dim but uh, with the addition of the peak audio level meter, I think it looks pretty darn cool. The only thing that could make it actually look any better is if they had red for the above zero. But this one here is just a monochromatic display. But it gets the job done. Because size is very important, I had to remove that little circuit board that was on here and try to make the transformer absolutely as small as possible. So what I've done, I'll show you here. I've got it powered up now, so I'm just going to remove this ground for the uh, that's for the uh, audio input. So what we've got on the transformer here, these are the bare wires. The DC supply. There was a full wave bridge rectifier on that circuit board, so and it went to these two outside wires here. So what I've done is I've taken my I've taken a diode, one diode here, you can see them here, there's one diode and there's the other diode that forms our full wave bridge rectifier with respect to the center tap which is here. I probably could have got away with a half wave because this is not powering any audio circuitry other than the, the op amp that's on the, uh, on the uh, meter but we went with the full wave bridge rectifier because we had the transformer there anyway so I put the two diodes in 
I didn't need a thousand microfarad capacitor because we're only powering up a vacuum fluorescent display. We're not powering up any other circuitry. So I just went down to 100, I think it's 100 mic I put in here, 35 volt, or no, 50 volt, I think. Anyway, it's it's plenty. It's only working with 24 volts. Uh, a little 100 microfarad cap to our common ground here and connected up our wires accordingly. Our 24 volt AC, our 24 volt DC, our um, ground reference and then the between the center tap and the 12 volt this is to power the clock module here these other two terminals are open actually you know this one here is also connected this is our 5 volts this one's white wire here this is for the filament on the vacuum fluorescent display for the view meter now the trick is and I put my heat shrink on here so that I don't get electrocuted as you can see uh, for the AC inlet and this wire is in no connection so I cut it off that was just where the switch was tied down to um, so now this we just have to mount this, find a place to mount this thing, try and get this thing inside this cabinet to some degree, get it mounted in there so that I can get the back on this thing and make it all look kind of nice when it's all done. But uh, anyway, that's um, basically what we're down to here. And as you can see, I've got the one power supply. I've got my audio ground open now, so we're not going to get an accurate read here. We're basically seeing the stereo different signal because I've only got the two audio signals going in. I do not have ground wire for them hooked up at this point, but I will when I put it in this case. Anyway, there we go. We've got our clock and we've got our audio display down here. They're two different colors. I've got a blue filter on the clock. I don't have one on the audio display. Maybe I'll put a blue filter in there too and make it ice blue like the clock. I do have some blue film that I can put in there. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this retrofit. Now I have a really unique conversation piece that will not only tell me the time, but it'll show me my audio level so I can sit there and watch it. Hey, maybe that's an idea. I'll hook it up by my TV so that I can see the time and as the TV's going, I can see the audio. Anyway, I'll find something to do with this thing for sure. And there we go. We have it finished. I've got it enclosed now. I've got the back on it, as you can see here. I've got my set buttons on the back here. On this side, I've got my audio inputs on the back here. And I've just basically put a plastic back on it. It extends out the back to house the power transformer. And we just filled a few holes up with some black tape, but everything's all insulated. Uh, heat shrink tubing on all the connections, and uh, we're good to go. Nothing to short out, nothing to touch. There we have it. There's my audio display meter, complete with digital clock. Hope you enjoyed this little quick and dirty project, recycling old vacuum fluorescent displays. And we'll catch you in the next video.